Welcome to DIY Volts, I'm Seth. After one year of continuous non-stop use, I wanted to give you an update on using the EG4 18K PV Hybrid Inverter from Signature Solar. I've installed this one year ago and I have put four megawatts through it and then the solar that's gone to it is five megawatts. And I uh, just wanted to kind of give you the good and the bad. Has this worked well? Was it worth the money? And all that good stuff. So. Let's jump into the video. There are several things that I want to mention about this inverter, but let's just start at the very beginning, the price tag. You're gonna pay just under $5,000 plus some tax for this inverter, and uh, in my opinion, that's a lot of money. So uh, has it been worth it for the price tag? Yes, it has. So at the uh, Four megawatts passed through this in one year for my home is going to be a payout of $1,200. So to pay off this inverter with the amount of use that I've put through it, you're looking at probably somewhere around four or five years. Um, however, that's not the only thing that I look at whenever I say, uh, is it valuable? We went through Hurricane Helene and my area had absolutely no grid power for 18 days straight. Uh, here in my house, the only thing we realized was that uh, the internet had gone down and cold showers. And so uh, this right here has been uh, just amazing for being off grid during that storm. So uh, that's the price tag. Uh, it's kind of expensive, but you do get a very uh, consistent and issue-free inverter whenever you are uh, paying that much. Okay, when I say issue-free, I mean mostly issue-free. I've actually had two things go wrong with this inverter. Kind of wrong, I guess. The first one is I updated the firmware for the inverter, which then messed up the screen. And so then I went to try and update the firmware for the screen, and it has not worked four or five different uh, versions, none of them seem to update. So what that means is when I look at my screen, it does not have the right uh, watt value coming in, doesn't have the right solar panel voltage, and uh, it does keep the correct percentage of battery though, which is nice. There is a workaround, and that is using the app. So let me show you that real quick. EG4 has a great app. You can click on this, and it will log in for you. Now you'll see here on the screen that today my solar yield is 1.4 kilowatt hours uh, for a total of 5.3 megawatts. Um, the battery discharge is uh, 2.9, uh, but the consumption total is just under four megawatts. But down here you'll see I currently have 1,499 watts coming in at uh, about 10.15 in the morning. So my panels aren't even in the sun yet. And then my house is consuming 739 watts, battery state 53%. I've actually been washing clothes and using the dryer this morning and that pulls down. Also, I've got a mini split running on this inverter right now as well. So uh, that's what the power consumption is there. So in short, you're able to use the app to uh, monitor this anywhere that you have Wi-Fi or cell phone signal, and you don't have to rely on the screen. I am still going to try and update this with the firmware, but so far, no luck. Now there is one other issue that has caused this inverter to reset. It's happened four or five times now. Whenever a hair dryer is turned to low heat, it just shuts this thing down immediately, just totally cuts it off takes about two minutes for it to come back up and be functional again. So the ladies in the house, obviously it's not me, <laughs> have to uh, turn their hair dryer on to high first and then it works just fine. I don't know, that's the only thing that causes this inverter to shut down. So there is something going on with that, but we found the workaround and it is just fine. So yes, cost is a bit expensive, but the inverter works very well for almost every situation that I've put it through. So that is out of the way. Let's talk about the installation and that process, how easy it is or difficult, and uh, show you my setup here. The inverter itself weighs approximately 120 pounds. What I did was mount a piece of plywood to my wall back here, put the mounting bracket up there, and then two people lifted it up and set it onto the bracket. 
once that was done, that's honestly the hardest part of this whole install. Um, so uh, you've got these three clips on the side, which will allow this to open up. And you can lock this if you're worried about people getting in there. But once you open this door, you're able to access the uh, internal workings here. Now all of this might look a little bit daunting to you, but I promise if you take it step by step, it's really not that bad. So this blue cable here is the communications that goes down to the battery. It basically just tells the inverter, is the battery full or is it not? Uh, here you've got your battery breakers. So this turns off the battery. I'll show you the battery here in just a moment. Over here is L1 and L2. This is your AC output, which feeds your house. Now this inverter is a split phase uh, 240. So uh, it's got 120 volt output here, 120 volt output here at 50 amp. So each leg of the power can do 6,000 watts independently, or if you combine them, it'll do a total of 12K, which is amazing. So uh, battery cables are down here. I'll show you the batteries in a bit. Over here is your uh, load, and then you've got your grid connection. I do have wires on my grid, which goes to my house breaker panel. I'm able to turn on the grid if I needed to, to charge my batteries in, uh, I don't know, a bad winter storm or something that um, my batteries were dropped too low from the solar. Now, down over here is where all of this solar power comes in. I've got nine kilowatts of solar, um, but you'll see there's actually double wires coming out, and that's because I have midnight surge protectors on my solar as well. These very dusty plastic bulbs are the uh, midnight surge protectors, and that's supposed to help any surges that come in from the solar. Um, but those just pair up in here with the solar input. When it comes to batteries, the EG4-18K can accept tons of different models and styles, but I use the Big Battery Ethos. So let me show you my 30 kilowatts of battery storage here. I have six modules of the Big Battery Ethos, and that is a total of 30 kilowatt hours. So uh, these little boxes here weigh 100 pounds. They're five kilowatts each, and you just stack them on top of each other, and they all wire together with their communications cable and their battery cables. They all go to the control box over here, and that is what talks to the EG4 18K inverter. You can see on the display here that the state of charge is correct, but obviously this seven watts coming in is not 1500. And up here, these watts are all mixed up as well. Um, the data over here is correct though. Now when it comes to actually using the power output from the inverter, you can do several different things. In my situation, I have this inverter completely off grid unless I have to charge my batteries with the grid. But so far in a year, I've not had to do that. So my current setup, I've got solar power coming in, goes to the hybrid inverter, charges the batteries, goes out to the house for the loads, and uh, it's all contained inside the house. There is no possibility of back feeding the grid. So I've got a, a dedicated critical loads panel. If I open that up, you can see I've got my circuits in here. Those are all separated. So if this goes down, none of these are gonna be on. Meanwhile, I've got the grid panel over here, which has the cooking range and my hot water and my HVAC system. I think I've got some smoke alarms still on there as well, but almost everything that my house uses is inside of this separate critical loads panel. So if I ever wanted to sell this house, I would remove the batteries, inverter, critical loads panel, put everything back in the main panel and nobody would be any the wiser. So it is kind of nice to have this dedicated panel here. Now there are other things that this inverter can do. You can have a mode where it will accept solar power to charge the batteries during the day so that you can use the inverter to feed your normal house panel at night when power is more expensive in certain areas. Um, it's kind of a, a power sharing kind of thing where um, it's always feeding the normal grid, but uh, it'll save power at night when it's more expensive. 
Now, if you have a bi-directional meter on your home, you can feed the grid with this inverter. So the power company will see that your meter is spinning in the reverse direction, and they will pay you back for the power you get. In my area, I don't have that option, and so I want to keep this away from my house grid and not ever have the company see that I've got it installed because uh, without having that bi-directional meter, I am charged for the power coming in and for the power going out. And if you've got nine kilowatts of solar feeding the grid, you could uh, pay a lot of money real quick uh, that you don't want to pay. So if you're gonna be doing a CT clamp with this, it will clamp around the uh, incoming grid power and it will say, okay, if the house is using power in this direction, feed the house. If it's uh, trying to send it out, then turn it off. So uh, you don't end up feeding the grid backwards. Um, although a friend of mine had that installed and it failed and he ended up with lots of power going back to the grid and they shut him down. So in my personal opinion, I like the off-grid setup where you can move critical loads over and just keep everything in-house and not worry about it. But there are hundreds, probably thousands of people right now at this very moment using the CT clamps and not having any issues. So anyway, just keep that little story in mind in case you want to do that. Now the 18K can accept 18 kilowatts of solar input. I currently have 9K coming in. And so it has been more than sufficient for my house, but I could definitely step it up if I ever needed to. If you want to check out the EG4 18K, I will have a link to the Signature Solar website down below and you can check out more information on this. After a year of use, I am satisfied that it was the right choice and I am very happy that I have got this system. It has worked flawlessly except for hair dryers and whatever the screen thing is that they uh, need to work on with firmware. But anyway, I'm very happy with it. Uh, be sure to check out the link below and I will see you in the next video.